This is Six Birds in a Trench Coat here to show you my top five habitats that I have built so far. Number five, Jaguar Walkway, Wetlands Zoo. The Jaguar Overpass is located inside this very large dome that I did not build in an even more very large zoo, which I did. The dome was originally built by Rudy Rencamel, who then used it to host a challenge, which of course I took part in. Now when it comes to the jaguars, what made me put this on the list is not so much the habitat itself, although it does have a neat little feature over here where you can look into their sleeping cave and at the same time they can walk up there. What I really like about this is the fact that it is so multi-layered. I did not have enough space here for the jaguars. If you look at it from above, it's really just this relatively tiny area of the little bit more up here that I carved out of the, the habitat back here. But the way I made it work anyway was by layering it. Over here we have the cave and they can also walk up here. In fact, they can walk all the way up onto that ledge. Over here, they can walk up the boardwalk leading to this small area up here with just this one little enrichment item to lure them up here so that guests can also view them from over here. But what really made me put this on the list is the walkway because out here above the food trucks and the tables I built a functioning Jaguar walkway. And I'm sure they won't use it while I'm filming, but it does actually work. Over here they can get into it by walking up the stone ramp and then along those wood pieces. And go all the way out here. and back up to the little top area here. Now this is something that I would love to recreate in another zoo and hopefully do it in a way so that the animals actually use it. The problem is doing this in franchise mode is virtually impossible because all of this has to be marked as habitat. Otherwise the animals will still count as escaped when they're in it and the second guests walk into the jaguar habitat, they panic. I've built plenty of habitats, nah, <laughs> plenty of habitats with underpasses. And it seems like as long as the guests are above the animals, everything is fine. But the second the animal is above the guests, they freak out. Number four. The Egyptian floodplains, also in Wetland Zoo. This habitat is part of my Three Rivers cruise, so you can see a little boat going through. And I know, I know, elephants don't actually live in Egypt. But since the Nile goes through several other countries, and elephants do in fact live in some of them, and also I really wanted elephants, I decided to put them in here. Wait, are you using a mud bath? That's so cute! I don't think I've seen an elephant use the mud bath before. Whee! You're adorable. 
But since I am calling this Egypt, well, <gasps> babies! No! Baby elephant who has the zoomies. I really do like these large multi-species habitats. It just has that more natural feel. And since this is Egypt, yep, the shelters are pyramids. And let me tell you, these were not easy to build. As um, witnessed by the fact that they don't quite match up. I do think that I am a significantly better builder now than I was when I built this zoo, so I might give the pyramids another try. Up here I have the animal talking points and a little seating area with some fabric canopies, which I think are a really good idea when you're in such a hot climate. Standing right here behind one of my first custom fences that is uh, not as excellent as later attempts. We have a really nice view, I think. And the staff buildings in the background put into these North African looking things. I picked this habitat because I think this has a really nice combination of animals and some very unique looking shelters. As well as the river going through it, the boat ride. And I love how the animals actually use the entire habitat. Number three, the Everglades in Reptopia. The Everglades is a single species habitat located in my newest zoo, Reptopia. It is a combination indoor-outdoor habitat for the American alligator. And I really like this very distinct Florida, Louisiana swamp-like vibe that this habitat has. Completely overgrown. Whee! Look at him go! I especially think the indoors part turned out way better than I could have possibly hoped for or imagined. With the steam coming off that water, the moss hanging from the trees, and just all these different kinds of ferns and grasses and twisted branches everywhere. There's so much detail in this habitat. Part of me did want to put this as number one, but I do have other things that definitely deserve that place as well. Number two, Southeast Asian Rainforest from Tropicana Ecodome. The Tropicana Ecodome isn't as much a dome as two ginormous wind tunnels, of which only one actually has anything inside it yet. To move past the Rainforest Cafe here, patent infringement. Over here we have the Southeast Asian Rainforest area. Now this is, uh, well, I mean, putting it on the list of my favorite habitats is kind of cheating a little because even though it feels like one habitat walking through it like that, it's actually three. Out in front here, we have the pygmy hippos. The large central habitat in here houses sun bears, otters, a couple of binturongs. Well, hello there. And the Malayan taper, which really needs to be larger than that. But even so, they are ridiculously adorable. Yeah, the shape is not exactly right. They need a remake. They deserve it. And 
this was pretty early in my building days, so uh, the signs still just look like that. The collection bins are only sort of covered. There's a little hanging platform up there that they can climb into. The third and smallest habitat over here houses the Chinese pangolin. These are one of my favorite animals. And despite the number of people here, these guys have never had any problems with stress, which is uh, probably due to the fact that they have so much vegetation. But the real reason why this habitat is on the list is that. This three-tiered waterfall with a walkway underneath it. This is definitely one of my all-time favorite creations. And number one, the Red Panda Snow Globe in Winter Wonderland. Last but certainly not least, we have a snow globe with snow on the outside. And even though it looks seasonal and festive, looking at it from the outside doesn't quite do it justice. So let's go in. One thing that I really like about this habitat is the fact that the pandas use the entire height. They go all the way up to the top of those trees. Now, as you can see, I have quite a few pandas in here. This is not franchise mode. This was actually the first habitat I built in this zoo. My first completely winter Christmas themed habitat. And this is on the list because the theming works so well. The habitat works really well for the animals. And because keeping animals inside a snow globe or the snow is on the outside just somehow makes sense. I love how this place looks like an actual snow globe, but it's also a perfectly functional habitat. It is so highly themed. The theming continues inside with all of these decorations, but at the same time, it has a natural woodlands forest feel. The trees and the ferns. If I had to pick one habitat that I built that I would live in, this would be it. I mean, yeah, you have glass on every side and everyone can just stand out there and stare at you, but you also have this little house that you can go into. All of the decorations. It just feels cozy. All in all, I think this habitat really strikes that elusive balance between wow and what the heck were you thinking? Great, walking through there with your flipping vacuum cleaner ruining my sh**. Um, excuse me, are, are you fighting? Could you not? You're supposed to be happy. Why are you fighting? <sighs> Idiots. Other things in store that, uh... Why are you floating? want to put this as number one, but okay, that is seriously weird. Can you stop doing that? They have baby hippos, baby... No, no, no. Why are they so adorable? Why are you just the cute... Whoa. Really? 